Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Radio Show. The show is about conversations that matter, and we invite people from all walks of life to come and share their heart stories, stories of upliftment and transformation. And I'm so excited to invite yet another stellar individual on the line with us. He is the best-selling author of The White Wolf's Way, a step-by-step guide to self-compassion, which is free on Amazon. That was released in February of 2020. And today he has released a brand new book called The White Wolf's Way, Easy Changes for a Better Life. Please welcome Paul Rogers to the show. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much for uh, having me here. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. So I guess we'll get right to it. Can you tell us a little bit about your background leading up to what you're doing today? Yes, I think I have a a fairly interesting backstory. Um, It happened really uh, two years ago. Two years ago in North Quebec, I was with my family um, in our car, uh, just pick up my little boy from daycare, and we're on our way back to our house, and we crossed a road, and a train hit the car, and um, at that stage, my life as I knew it ended. Um, Mm. So, fairly dramatic. Um, I know I'm very, very lucky to have walked away from a train crash, and... Mm -hmm. um, I was with my wife. My wife and I were actually on life support for 10 days after the um, crash. And my poor parents, because you can hear I'm um, English, they uh, Mm -hmm. they had to fly over from from England. And the doctors told them, they said, listen, um, when you get here, we we may have to make that ultimate decision because he hasn't woken up. And mm. so with that, my poor parents jumped on the plane. And, of course, it's seven hours without any communication. So that must have been the longest seven hours they, of their lives. Of course, yes. And, <laughs> and my wife woke up the night before I did, and she told her uh, nurses that she wanted to come and see me. And mm-hmm. uh, they brought her down and I was still asleep. I, I like to say asleep because it's a far more romantic way of looking at it than, than right. actually yeah. the, the alternative. And she chatted and went back to, and then they took her back to her room. And when my parents turned up the next day, the doctor said, forget the conversation we were going to have. He's awake. And they said, listen, we don't know what happened last night, and we have no medical explanation of why he's awake. So we're just going to put this down as a miracle. Wow. So, you know, the word miracle is thrown around a lot in, in life. And mm-hmm. to be honest, that, that really does describe, because there was no medical um, explanation. And so that is where really my story started and since then for over the last two years I and my wife and uh, my little boy uh, was not injured I'll just quickly digress um, we had a big white husky Malumut because we lived up in North Quebec mm-hmm. and at the time of the accident he jumped over the back seat because my wife was sitting in the back seat with my little boy and he landed on them and when the firefighters found him he had actually saved their lives and he sadly didn't make it and the only injury my little boy had was almost like a Harry Potter scar of a little cut where the claw clipped him as he jumped over Mm. and that is kind of where my idea came from the books for he was my personal white wolf Um, and over the last two years we have slowly got better Um, I have a severe TBI which is a traumatic brain injury and I must admit I didn't even know what that was I had to go and look it up Um, and I suffer from chronic PTSD and noise sensitivity so it's been a big change. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that is when my life really started again. And I, really, sorry. I, I am just, um, I'm so moved by uh, what you've just shared. And Paul, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine uh, what you've been through, but uh, all I can think of uh, is, to sum it all up, is truly a miracle. Yes. It's a miracle. Yes, and it's, um, I have so many questions in my head right now, <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, leading up to that very moment, um, and, and you can share as, as candidly as you want to, or we can go on to the next question. Absolutely. You know, when people say they're faced with, with, with something like that is happening, um, uh, and did you have um, a sense of your life flashing in front of your eyes uh, leading up to that very moment? Uh, what was it like for you? Do you, do you even recall what happened yeah. before the actual collision? The, the, good, the good news is, is that my, the mind is a wonderful thing and it protects itself. And so thankfully I cannot remember anything and I have memory loss of about two or three weeks um, before the, mm. the accident. Um, mm. But there is a, that was only the conscious part of the mind because I was unconscious. What mm-hmm. still remained recording was the subconscious. So I suffer from flashbacks and they usually happen if there's a loud noise or a metallic noise. And the flashback mm-hmm. isn't a visual thing. It's a sensations and an emotion thing. It's because that still was recording what was going on, even though I was, I was unconscious. And so, yes, I do know what's happened because my body tells me and I've had to learn to actually not listen to the voices mm. in my body because actually they can drop me straight back at the, at the accident scene in a heartbeat. Mm. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> um, I, I'm... I have an, another question I have, Paul, is um, you refer to your son, and, and, and what's his name? His name's Sasha. Now, Sasha, in, in his incredible bravery, um, and you, you refer to him as your white wolf. Uh, for those of us who don't know what that refers to, what is a white wolf? Can you describe that? Um, in the books which I have written, um, when I woke up, um, there was something that had changed and um, I started wanting to create and to, and to help people. And the story comes initially from the old uh, Native American story of the two wolves, mm-hmm. um, which it, if people are not familiar with that, it's a grandfather talking to his grandson saying that there's a black and a white wolf and uh, to paraphrase, he says, which one survives? And the grandson, don't know. Well, the answer is, whichever one you feed. And we have inside us a black wolf, which is the negative self-talk, self-sabotage, all the things which are, are the sort of the darker side. And then we have the white wolf, which is then the confidence, the strength, and there's a conflict in us all the time about which one is in ascendance and which one is in descendants. And it was how I figured that I could share um, what was effectively my experiences and help to other people, but using a story to actually explain it. And it's, um, it's kind of like my... Um, my lasting tribute and you when you see the book in the first page you'll see there's actually a picture of him um and yeah so <laughs> he's a hero um mm-hmm. and i want at least to actually give him an immortal life now by being in a book beautiful that is beautiful <laughs> and how is your wife um right now paul well she 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 um she was sat in the back, so thankfully she didn't have the broken bones because um, I broke two bone uh, two C one and two in the in my neck, 
an L3 mm. and 4 in my back, as well as a smashed skull. So she, oh. um, her injury has actually just been a um, severe bruising. But at the time, she had the more dramatic injury because there was, she got hit around the front of the head. So oh. what, they ha- what they had to do is they had to actually remove a large part of her scalp. So sorry if anyone's trying to have their dinner at the moment. Um, mm. And release the pressure. Mm. Um, and then later on, a few, uh, ten t- what, two weeks later, they put it back in. Um, mm. So we're in the same accident, but we've taken very different paths um, on our recovery. Thankfully, she yes. hasn't got the PTSD, which is just an awful thing, to be honest. Um, yeah. And so we, we, we stuck together and, and it pushed us closer together because there's yes. anything which is adversity always brings out, I think, the, the fight and the best in people. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we are very lucky that we actually have walk this journey together and we are very very similar people and have both have the desire to use our experiences to try and help other people um in their lives excellent excellent so as as you have um shared in the blink of an eye uh Mm -hmm. life as you knew it changed but Mm -hmm. uh what happened was you survived and there was a rebirth there was a renaissance, and, and, it gave, it, and, it, and it gave birth to a purpose that you didn't know. And uh, this has grown into your, your passion work, your mission. And in, uh, just, just a couple of months ago, uh, you released your first miniseries, The White Wolf's Way, A Step-by-Step Guide to Self-Compassion, uh, free on Amazon, which is amazing. And, uh, and it reached number one in three That's self-help right. categories and received the Amazon bestseller banner. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, yeah. um, what, what that hopefully tells me and, and, and other people that actually it has been well received and it's out there helping right now. Um, so it, it, as you say, it, 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 it gives purpose and that was the hardest thing to find after waking up because everything I knew had gone. Uh, I even didn't know who I was, why I was, where I was. And I had to learn to walk again, how to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's, um, it has been a journey. And it's very easy to become bitter. And mm. I have seen that temptation and... I always try to look at whatever situation is, do I want to be a victim or do I want to be a victor? Um, Because in each situation you get to choose and it takes exactly the same time to choose which of the two to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I think it's um, the way I look at it. Like every day it's uh, the battle of, the, the mind is really a battleground. And and you're you're it's like you have to face different challenges every day, and you and the choices are really um, will drive you to the outcome of the end of the day. You know what I mean? So you can uh, uh, decide to be happy, I mean, or you can decide to be angry and resentful, and then ultimately it will affect you in so many ways, physically and spiritually and emotionally. So uh, every day is a new brings its new challenges. Um, and, and I appreciate how you've, you've just been so powerful in spearheading um, this movement and, and helping people to, you know, recollect all these experiences and, and recreate it into a new positive trajectory. And, and I, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your book, if you could, you know, guide us through what people can learn through the sure. White Wolf's way of self-compassion. Sure. I mean, the whole idea of self-compassion actually came to me via my doctor because in the early days she was saying, Look, listen, Paul, you're going to really need to develop some self-compassion. And I actually, to be honest, didn't quite really know what she meant. And I know that before the accident, I didn't give self-compassion 
a thought. When I actually looked at it and started researching, and I started finding, actually, it is the first keystone to be able to actually recover because you have to look inside or everything you look on the outside is effectively gone. So it comes in lots of ways. I mean, what I have decided and, and have done now for quite a while is to practice gratitude. Now, I have a gratitude journal, which is basically 10 things which I every day am grateful for. And that's one step because you've actually got to look inside. And this current trauma which we're all going through, the coronavirus, this is Uh kind of like the same thing Uh because a trauma is trauma and and you don't have to have something as dramatic. If it's overwhelming to you, that is a trauma. And people Uh are facing things which they never had to face before like financial problems, emotional, physical. And... When you actually are put under pressure, you actually, when you start to look inside, which we've always been told is a bad thing, but it's not, you find that actually there's a gift there, which is some strength you didn't realize you had. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when you unwrap it, it's like, oh, that's really good. And then you look over your shoulder and you can see all the times in your life where there was some adversity, that each time there was a gift but you haven't actually realized it is there or even got to unwrap it. So it's like having all these presents which are there behind you and you can discover that. So the first real thing is to get over what society says is a selfish thing and actually look after yourself first. Mm-hmm. So it's very uh, true. <laughs> yeah, very true. I mean, and, and especially at this sort of time, especially during this time, and and yeah. uh, and I think um, I think we've been kind of socialized to believe that uh, if we take time to ourselves, that uh, we're being selfish. But that mm. really isn't what it is. It's it's like yeah. how you've defined it is self compassion, and we really should take better care of ourselves, and especially you know people in certain roles um, who nurture. They're giving away, and then they're walking around with an empty, what I call, love tank, you know, mm. and they have to refuel mm. themselves. So they, they have to be kind to themselves if, in order to be kind to others. You, you, you can't pour from an empty cup. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, <laughs> just resting and refueling is not sliding backwards, and it's not this pursuit of keep marching on. You can only give to somebody else if in fact you actually take the time to start with yourself um yes and that's a that's a that's a huge thing once you actually starting to get that and and starting to wrestle with that whole idea other things just seem to fall in place around it without too much effort it's quite it's quite a nice experience excellent um so what what other part of self-compassion can you share with us one of the things I also have done is um, to give to others is actually and actually that is one of the big reasons why this has now turned into my passion is that I am doing everything I can to heal to repair myself with self-compassion and Volunteering, I, I volunteered to, um, at the local uh, animal refuge to go and walk the dogs and things. Uh. Now, volunteering, if you're giving something away, you're putting energy out there into the universe, which is positive energy, with no expectation of having anything back. And volunteering and doing things like that is really good. I also find animals are sometimes preferable to people, so it's actually quite mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> but it, it, volunteering is a really good thing, and, and it doesn't have to. It, you can, if you, if you volunteer to make a choice, uh, pay mm-hmm. something forward for somebody else. Mm-hmm. That is the same type of thing, um, and y- you get far more 
disproportionately to the deed you do. And, and that is really, once you start doing it again, it becomes kind of addictive. It does, yeah. yeah. And you want to do more because it's, um, it's, it's so rewarding and you get that, that rush of uh, just, just seeing the, the happiness, uh, seeing the, the, whatever the project is, the accomplishment of what you've done um, is, mm. is so enriching. So it's, yes. it's quite what I call a rush of, of giving yourself away. Giving love away um, is a wonderful thing for me. So I totally get it. Totally get it. <laughs> now, you, you um, alluded to uh, the very trying times that we're all um, experiencing globally. And uh, mm. I just wanted to ask you, um, before we talk about your latest release, and congratulations for that, what um, message of hope can you offer us today? The um, trauma doesn't just happen at the site of whatever the trauma is. My trauma has been living with me for the past two years. So this is the same type of thing which a lot of people are facing at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. And my psychologist said to me um, very early on, he said, um, Paul, you've never failed. And I said, well, yeah, of course I've failed. I've had setbacks. And he says, oh, no, no, you haven't ever failed like this. Something you can't run away from, something you can't talk your way out of and have no control over. And then he said, well, because you've never failed, you haven't got the right toolkit to deal with it. And this is the same thing which we are now facing. It is a trauma. We can't run away from it. We can't talk a way out of it. And actually, it's having effects on financial, emotional, and physical. And we are just working out that the things that have worked before, the, the paradigms we had before, don't work at this stage. And we're having to relearn. And, and, it, and I think, like most things, adversity brings out the best. That it, you know, mm-hmm. Even though we are now socially isolated, um, which I think is, is a it's a poor term because we're talking and we're being social and it's not an isolation at all. Mm. It's just taking one element out, the physical. You can, still, you can still be spiritually and mentally and emotionally actually helping other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so the message would be, you've got this. There is strength in there and you, you, everyone has it. And the best thing is if you don't think or can't find it, there's people like myself, like other people, who are willing to actually say, look, I'll give you a hand. It's, it, that is, that's what makes us our passion. It carries it on. It expands it. It doesn't let it die. Um, so don't be frightened about asking and, and for help because – you will gain. You will receive more than what you first expected. Wonderful. Wonderful pearls of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Now let's talk about um, your book, The White Wolf's mm. Way, uh, you know, Easy Changes for a Better Life. Can you tell us yes. about uh, what, what um, the intention of the book was and what people can learn? For sure. I mean, the the the, uh, the, originally, it's a five-part mini-series, and um, actually, they're all written. The, the other manuscripts, I just haven't actually got into a good form. But what I try to do is to take people on a journey. And a good starting point would be, okay, look inside yourself. Let's learn some self-compassion. Let's get that going. The next step to that really is, is let's see if we can actually make these habits and incorporate them into what we're doing and that will change our behaviors and so this is actually a a sort of a a drilling down and actually pushing and getting the ideas to take deeper root and once they become sort of you do it more than two or three times it starts becoming a habit i'll give you an example of um, where we are Six or seven weeks ago or a few months ago, we would not have expected to walk into a shop and be greeted to say, can you please wash your hands? But Mm. now, 
mm-hmm. when we walk into a shop. If it hasn't got it, we, we're kind of like, well, where's, where's, where's the place you can wash your hands? Yes. And when, when, this, when this crisis has finished, we're not going to go back to the habits beforehand because we've got used to doing the habits now, which we've taken on board and said, no, this is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's kind of like the same. I'm, I describe the book really as um, listening, and I play a game with people in the description. I say, um, what's your favorite song? So just have a quick think. Play along with me here. Okay, you've got it there. What are the lyrics to that song? I bet if I asked you to sing it out loud, if you're feeling particularly brave, you could do so. And, and if it was some money on the table, I'm pretty sure you would remember it. Try and think of a conversation you had on that day when you last heard that song. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to because it hasn't made an emotional connection. And this is what this book tries to do. It not only talks to the logical mind, which actually likes lists, it also talks to the emotional mind um, where the, the stories, the songs, and it therefore... It's like having a new playlist for your brain. And the more you listen to the lyrics, the more it feels natural. And it's the same as if you hear a tune and you go around thinking, humming a tune, you think, where's that tune come from? And it's something you heard on a commercial or my, my four-year-old is watching things like Aladdin and Frozen and I end up, I end up walking around singing it, which is kind of embarrassing to hear out, but <laughs> social isolation helps because no one can hear me now. Um, so, um, but you, you can see that, you know, the brain is capable of doing that. And rather than having a mm-hmm. shopping list of let's do this, let's do that, using the story and, and pick up the good habits, all it is is effectively building a toolkit and people will take what they can, what they, what they need from, from the books um, so that's the kind of like the mission behind it. Excellent. Excellent. And it's a, a powerful mission. I, you know, I had a question for you, Paul. Um, mm-hmm. I know that, uh, you were, um, you were born and raised in England. And, uh, I guess the question is how, um, did you make the connection with, um, I guess, in indigenous, um, uh, folklore or the understanding of uh, the indigenous culture? Well, um, I was working with my wife as a teacher in the Cree communities. Um, I'll give a shout out to the, to the village. It's Waswanipi, uh, which is about mm-hmm. an hour and a half um, across from uh, Shibugamo. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. were up there for five years, um, and I taught adult education um, And so we lived in a community, and so we actually, once you live there day to day, your appreciation of their type of life and and their values, once you've been there, you won't be able to forget it. And Mm -hmm. I think that has that sort of freedom and spirit and everything that's helped shape, because these thoughts seemingly came out of the blue, and and they stuck. So, and when I wrote, yeah. I, I kind of feel guilty because people say, oh, I had writer's block. And I never had that once. The stories just came whoosh, straight out. So mm. I'm very, very lucky. Cause, and I had no desire to be a writer before the accident. Um, mm. I was creative, but not to the sort of extent I am now. And I said, oh, yes, I'm spiritual. And I really didn't quite get what that meant. But now mm-hmm. I really do understand it. And mm. the thing I li- really liked about the indigenous way is the holistic approach to things. Mm-hmm. That it's not just a physical, there's the emotional, there's the spiritual. And the, you know, there's the whole philosophy of taking care of person in a complete way. Yes, yes. Yes, excellent. So uh, you had no aspirations to be an author. You were um, going about uh, you know, a wonderful journey with your wife as a teacher, um, adult education, you said, and, and yes. not really 
kind of um, reckoning yourself to be someone spiritual and then uh, when the accident happened, the rebirth happened right after and then changed everything, uh, uh, which is uh, really absolutely. remarkable. I mean, and, really, and remarkable. It really, it really is a sort of a, and I think rebirth is actually quite a nice way of phrasing it because um, my paradigm I had beforehand, uh, I've been listening to Bob Proctor, by the way, and he's a, he's a local for you guys. He's so a, a shout out to one of the Toronto local men. Um, and basically, mine shifted because actually it got taken away completely. So I've had to relearn and rebuild what is now conditioning and controlling me. And mm-hmm. I feel very fortunate now that actually I can view this terrible accident as actually a gift. Um, mm. Somebody asked me very recently, or oh, would you go back and change anything? And of course, you know, <laughs> no one wants to, um, to do what I, where I've been, but actually I wouldn't want to change it now because actually um, I'm better, I'm stronger, and I'm mm-hmm. more focused than I have been Ever really wonderful, and Paul, what do you what do you see yourself doing in the next say year? And if so so much has happened quickly in in a, in a in a period of weeks and months. But do you foresee where you want to be in a year and have that? Sure, I'm on, what do you see? I am on a journey. I, I'm certainly on yeah. a journey, and. Uh, I've already done so much in two years and I have this drive which I really want to actually continue down this route because it feels right. Uh, My Mm -hmm. wife and I have released, uh, put together a a website which is uh, at uh, www.takeactionacademy.ca of Mm -hmm. various articles, self-help, some of them are free, some of them are paid, they're training courses, and we are working on the content because we really want to provide people with a resource that if they uh-huh. don't know where to go, that they they can actually go and build their own toolkit because every single person, their needs will be different. Um, right. So I used to be in the, in the many lifetimes ago, I, was, I started my life as a commercial lawyer, so... I spent 11 years looking after businesses. So being able to bring that experience as well, as well as sort of the the new birth as well, is quite a rare mix. And Mm -hmm. so I see us really in in this year of of helping more and more people. That's really the goal. And the means of doing it through books, website, podcasts. uh, I've been a guest on a few podcasts, and I really, really enjoy it. Um, and like this interview with you is, is fantastic because it, it gets it out to a, a, a fresh set of people through memberships to our, our, our website and um, coaching and speaking. Um, I'm quite happy to actually stand up in front of 20,000 people, but I would have to do it like a Hollywood star through a, a, feed, a video feed because <laughs> with my PTSD, if somebody drops something on the floor or scraped a chair, that will be me and I'm toast. So I, I, if I can do it through a, a Zoom or any other platform, mm-hmm. that is really a very good way of me being able to reach people. Absolutely. Each one, reach one, teach one. That's the way it, I look exactly. at it. Exactly, and, and it's the same as, you know, when, when the students are ready, the teacher will appear. It's the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I was a teacher too, Paul. Um, oh, wow. I taught it. <laughs> yeah, so we have that in common. I, I, I taught uh, early childhood education at uh, the college level as well as community development. So, uh, yes, I guess we're still teaching, but in different types of classrooms. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a great saying that, you know, the real classrooms don't have walls. And, <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I totally agree because at the moment with this coronavirus, man, that's, <laughs> you better shape up and listen because there's got some messages in there. Yeah, definitely. It's got some messages and it's got some very strict rules and uh, we have to pay attention, um, take mm. care of ourselves and take care of our community. 
Um, and uh, this has just been uh, such a wonderful um, opportunity to learn from you, and uh, you've been such an inspiration, uh, and you're, you will continue to be an inspiration, you and your family, um, really many blessings to them. Um, and Thank I wanted to much. say that I, as we were talking, um, I have a little bit of, a, I guess, a gift to um, maybe put out into um, the universe, the words, whatever. Words have power, right, Paul? Uh, mm. So whatever you mm. speak can come. You can attract it into existence. And I believe a movie is going to be coming out of your experience. Well, to be honest, uh, I think I'd like to do a character called Brad Pitt can play me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, you heard it here first. And uh, so, um, yeah, so Brad, if you're, if you're listening, um, we, I get my people to talk to your people. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, this has uh, been such a pleasure. And, uh, Paul, please tell us how can people reach you on social media? Where can they find the book yeah, sure. and where can they connect with you? Yeah, sure. The, um, the, I'm very active on LinkedIn, and that's where I, I came across um, Nikki here. So it's, it's a really good way of meeting people. Um, and if you just type in Paul Rogers, um, you can't see me because you're in radio land, but I actually I have dreads. So it's pretty easy to spot me because I'm, <laughs> I'm the guy who's got dreads. And so... Um, um, so that, that so LinkedIn is the best place. If you want to have a look at the website, it's uh, www.takeactionacademy.ca. And the books are actually under a pen name of Kate Summers. Um, and that was the person who was my avatar to help me draw on some very painful memories mm. to actually turn it into – because I can use it as a third person, but I still can't go back to them in, as a first person at the moment. So mm-hmm. the books mm-hmm. are on Amazon.com, and they're in all the other territories, but it's Kate Summers is the author, and that is actually me. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, 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 se- the second book's out today, so I'm, I'm sort of kind of excited to uh, see how that goes. That is exciting news. And, uh, Paul, thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you so much for... Uh, transforming us uh, with um, everything you've shared. And uh, I truly appreciate it and know the listeners uh, do as well. And you've been listening to the Nikki Clark Radio Show with our very special guest, uh, best-selling author Paul Rogers. Please reach out to him on social media. And uh, you can please uh, visit his website, www.takeactionacademy.ca. Um, and please uh, reach out to uh, Paul and congratulate him on the release of his book, Today, The White Wolf's Way, Easy Changes for a Better Life. Paul, thank you again. Many blessings to you and your family. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and stay safe, stay strong. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.